Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about a discussion upon uh, what has happened to the ocean water after a hurricane that happened in 2022. Um, Florida's west coast actually got hit by a hurricane called Hurricane Ian, which was a category five hurricane. Luckily, me and my family were in Naples, Florida, where we managed to survive. But um, a lot of people around us did not manage to survive. Uh, they got brutally damaged by the hurricane. Some people did not make it. Um, it was a very devastating time back in 2022. This is 2024. Um, and I wanted to talk about a, a little bit about the ocean's water quality and what's going on with our fish um, along how it affects humans and the diseases that these circumstances may affect us as humans. Um, so after Hurricane Ian, um, it destroyed a lot. A lot of debris fell into the water. Uh, let's not even talk about some of the dead bodies that may have even floated around the area. Um, it was a very devastating time. Um, so I wanted to talk about what happens to fish after a hurricane, because if you know, if you've been a local here for about 10 years in Naples, Florida, you would know that this is a very popular fishing spot. Um, five years ago before the hurricane, um, I used to go fishing and it would only take me one cast out to get my first fish. Um, it wouldn't take me long to catch a fish. Uh, compared to now after the hurricane, it is probably, it's such a mission to catch a fish, which, I mean, you still catch fish, but you know, the species of fish are leaving. Um, there's new species coming in. The ocean is not in its best state right now. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about what happens to fish after a hurricane. Freshwater fisheries biologists explain why fish kills occur after hurricanes. Bacteria break down plant mineral in the water and consume oxygen. Often this process results in oxygen levels that are lethal to fish. Um, Hurricane Ian hit September 23, 2022 through September 30th. And I clearly remember we lost power. Um, a lot of buildings got damaged. Uh, Naples Pier, which I have a video on my YouTube, um, completely destroyed. Uh, they're still building a new pier right now. But um, if you're from Naples, uh, you were probably familiar with something called the Red Tide. And I'm going to talk to you about what Red Tide is because after Hurricane Ian, a lot of blue-green algae and a lot of Red Tide have affected our waters. Um, so I'm gonna to read to you what Red Tide is. Red Tide is one type of harmful algal bloom caused by high concentrations of the toxic dinoflagellant K. brevis, which is a type of microscopic algae found in the Gulf of Mexico. Red tide typically forms naturally offshore, commonly in late summer or early fall, and is carried onto coastal waters by winds and currents. Once inshore, these opportunistic organisms can use nearshore nutrient sources to fuel their growth. Blooms typically last until winter or spring, but in some cases can endure for more than one year. Now, if you come to the beaches of Naples and you come to the beaches of Fort Myers, um, you will probably see a sign on the beach every once in a while that says, be cautious of red tide. And red tide is very harmful to not only animals, but humans, because a lot of fish die in the process of red tide. Um, I'm gonna to read to you why red tide is harmful. Um, red tide produces potent neurotoxins that can be harmful to the health of both wildlife and people. Wind and wave action can break open red tide cells and release toxins into the air. This is why you should monitor conditions and stay away from beaches where red tide is in bloom. People in coastal areas can experience varying degrees of eye, nose, and throat irritation during a red tide bloom. Some individuals with chronic respiratory conditions like asthma or chronic lung disease might experience more severe systems. Red tide toxins can also affect the central nervous system of fish and other marine life, which can lead to fish kills. So when red tide is occurring in the ocean, which is if you look at it from a satellite um, point of view, um, red tide turns the water a little bit, kind of almost red and brown, and it causes a lot of the fish to die, a lot of the marine life, turtles, um, fish, um, seagulls, even pelicans, they all die. Um, and I wanted to read to you about what causes red tide. A red tide bloom develops naturally, but recent studies have discovered mankind's infusion of other nutrients into the mix can make the red tide last longer or get stronger. But biology, chemistry, and physics uh, interact to produce the algal bloom. No one factor causes the development of a red tide bloom. <clears throat> 
excuse me so yeah a lot of red tide has been happening in the water which is hard for us fishermen to actually catch fish a lot of the fish are dying a lot of the carcasses that end up on the coast of the water are eat getting eaten by sharks for instance if you go to the coast of the water and the beaches you'll see a lot of sharks eating these dead animals um and this has all happened after hurricane ian there was red tide before hurricane ian but after hurricane ian there's a lot of red tide and there's another new thing called the blue green algae um so blue green algae is a new thing that's coming upon florida and i'm going to read to you a little bit about, about what blue green algae is more than a dozen masses of blue green algae were discovered by testing in the kalasahocha river from june through august which prompted state officials to the issue health advisories from the upper kalusahatchee river to the lower warning of the presence of the toxic organism throughout what is blue green algae blue green algae is also known as, as also known as a cyanobacteria, are a group of organisms that can live in a freshwater, saltwater, or brackish water area. Large concentrations called blooms can change the water color to blue, green, brown, or orange, or red. Some cyanobacterial blooms can look like a foam scum or mats on the surface of freshwater lakes and ponds. As algae in a cyanobacterial bloom die, the water may smell bad. So blue-green algae is a new thing as well that has uh, appeared in our waters of Florida. Uh, blue and green algae has came a lot after Hurricane Ian and it is harmful to both pets, humans, and wildlife. Um, if you look at some of my YouTube videos, there's a few lakes that I posted with gators and you'll see on the edges of the water, uh, there's a green and blue coloration of like mossy material kind of looks like seaweed but it's actually blue green algae and it's very you know it's very infectious so you don't want to get near it um, if you want to stay clean I'm going to read to you why blue green algae is harmful different types of blue green algal bloom species can look different and have different impacts however regardless of species many types of blue green, blue -green algae can produce toxins that can make you or your pet sick if swallowed or possibly cause skin and eye irritation. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection advises staying out of water where algae is visibly present as specks or mats or where water is discolored. Pets or livestock should not come into contact with algal bloom impacted water or with algal bloom material or fish on the shoreline. If they do, wash the animals immediately. So if you see a pet, do not let him near blue or green algae for it is harmful to the animal. What causes blue-green algae? Blue-green algae blooms occur when the algae that are normally present grow in the numbers that normal. Uh, within a few days, a bloom can cause clear water to become cloudy. Winds tend to push some floaty blooms into shore where they become more noticeable. Cyanobacterial blooms can form in warm, slow-moving waters that are rich in nutrients. Blooms can occur at any time, but most often occur in the late summer of year, early fall. If any major type of water quality alert is issued, you can find the details here in WGCU's water quality report. I am getting this report off WGCU. Um, it is one of the latest water reports that we have here in the Florida region. Um, but if you know, if you're a local and you've lived in the southwest coast of Florida for quite a while, you will see uh, the change in nature in the marine biological system right now and how the ecosystem is changing every day. Um, there's a lot of new resources in trying to find a resolution and making the water a little bit more healthy by planting coral nurseries around the edges of the shorelines and possibly, you know, uh, try not to pollute as much in the water as well by throwing your garbage as well because the debris from the hurricane already has done so much pollution to our uh, ecosystem and marine life in the ocean as well and it prevents a lot of fishermen from being able to fish in a peaceful environment so um, leaving that at that I wanted to share this video in regards to red tide blue green algae and micro microscopic bacteria that may be harmful to humans which you should be aware of when you go to beaches and lakes and stuff like that um, like, comment, or share. If you're a Hurricane Ian survivor, I congratulate you for making it this far. For not many people have made it. Um, but if you feel interested and you have any resolutions, you may think may help uh, to conserving the water and the nutrients. Uh, please like, comment, or share. And have a great day, guys. God bless you all.